Well, it looks like I've ruffled some feathers again. And I don't do this on purpose, but sometimes I do something in a video that people take offense to. Shocker, right? This happens. And in this case, it was all about this DeWalt DCD-999. I recently did a video about a clutch. Did a lot of research to understand exactly how this works. I even took apart a drill and showed the mechanics of it, which was pretty fascinating in my opinion. And really just kind of walked everybody through it. One of the demonstrations I did in here was with this particular powerhouse of a drill. I had this nice big flex volt battery on here and I had this in first gear and I also had it in the very lightest setting on the clutch. Drove a screw and guess what? In that lightest setting it's supposed to be really limited in the torque output that it does but it wasn't. I mean it was just a wrecking ball. It just just drilled that thing right in. No resistance, no slowing down or anything like that. And that's not what we want to see. Now to do a comparison I also used this flex 24 volt drill. This one is also an absolute powerhouse. It also has this big stacked lithium six amp hour battery on here and I also had it in first gear. It did a great job. When it was on this first graduation it barely drove the screw in. Twist it over to the second graduation drives it in a little bit more. It's basically just what I would expect from a drill. Even a big powerful drill like this or like the DCD 999. But a lot of people said I didn't do it right and were surprised by this. So what I wanted to find out is the answer to the question how much does the gear actually matter in terms of affecting your clutch as well as how much does the battery matter? What if you put a little guy like this on? Is that going to affect the amount of torque that's limited by the clutch? And the reason this is important to me is because I think a lot of times people might accidentally be using the clutch and having way too much power output because maybe the battery's too big or maybe it just can't do it well in that lower gear. So we've set up a series of tests here to answer the question is your clutch possibly being rendered practically useless by your gear and by your battery? For this test I've got five drills we're looking at and each of these is really the highest class most torque that you can get for that particular brand in cordless power drills. So I've got the Milwaukee, I've got the DeWalt, Flex, Festool, and Ryobi. And for each of them I've got the biggest, beefiest, highest output battery that you can get for them as well as a smaller low amp hour battery. Two amp hours, one and a half, three amp hours, somewhere in that range. Nothing special. Just kind of a standard cheapo that you might come with your drill or even cheaper than that. So we're going to find out what difference it makes. We're going to use these three inch thick MDF blocks. We're going to range from the lightest and most sensitive setting on the clutch to the highest setting plus a few in between. And we'll do a true apples to apples comparison on all of these to find out how much that clutch is affected by the battery and the gear. We're starting out with the Milwaukee in first gear and it's got the high output 8.0 amp hour battery. Okay, bottom all the way out there. So there's Milwaukee. Next up is the DeWalt. Here we go in first gear and the big flex volt battery. <laughs> okay, that's exactly what I was demonstrating before is it just won't stop no matter what. So it's in first graduation, but it's just, th this test is over. There, there's really nothing left. So I'm going to go to three here and I'll just finish this off, but they're all going to go all the way in. That answers that. Everything all the way, all the time. Not impressive. Now for the flex, again, first gear, big battery. Now for the Festool, I only have the one battery size, so we're only going to do two tests, just first gear and second gear. There's no high output or low output battery. So I've got it set to graduation number one on the clutch right now and in gear one. Okay, that's an electronic clutch, so it just stops and then beeps when it's done. We at least had one little difference from Festool, but not a lot. So oh, and these are almost poking through. They're going all the way down. Now last and least expensive at least is the Ryobi. First gear, big battery. It looks like we've got some pretty definitive results, at least for the first gear big battery test. The Milwaukee has some sensitivity, the DeWalt none whatsoever, it's just a brute all the way through and through in, in terms of those settings at least. And then here on the Flex it had really good range on there, pretty impressive. And then we're moving on to the Festool, barely any, really it sunk them all except for the first one. And then the Ryobi last, 
did probably second best. Second best, third best maybe, somewhere in the middle. So did okay, uh, could have done better. Now it's worth noting that the clutch is often used as a safety feature as well. Whether it's intended for that originally doesn't really matter, but it can actually be a safety feature. So if you've got a big old bit on here like this, for example, something that's removing a lot of wood, and maybe a hole saw is a great example of that, something that might cause some kickback, then the clutch can engage before it kicks back and save your arm, your hand, your wrist. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're doing something that you're a little unsure of as far as how much grab that might have, just turn that clutch on to the highest setting. I've got it on 11, which is as high as this one goes, and that might save your arm and just act as a nice little built-in safety feature. Oh yeah. The next round of tests, big battery, second or highest gear. In some of these, the DeWalt goes to third gear, the Festool goes to fourth gear, the rest go to two. Now for the DeWalt in third gear, electric clutch kicked in and it stopped itself. Woo, okay, that is fast. Next is the Flex in second gear. These higher gears go so much faster than the first gear. It kind of surprises me. This Festool has a pretty interesting gear switch here. So you can go one, two, three, four. So I can go one, two, three, and now it's in its highest gear, fourth gear. So let's give it a whirl. I suspect this will be way more sensitive this time. Let's find out. Oh yeah, okay. That's night and day difference. Okay, I will say that performed way more like what I would have expected from a Festool, so that did nice. Now last for the big battery and highest gear, we've got the Ryobi. Also really loud on this one, sounds just like the Flex. Once again, a pretty interesting set of results on the high gears, definitely way different from that first gear. So here on the Milwaukee, we've got a little bit of sensitivity, but not doing all that great. DeWalt even worse than the Flex did a great job. Honestly, this is a great little staircase here. Same with the Festool, that looks really nice. And same with the Ryobi. These last three did really well. I do have to acknowledge here that a lot of times when you're buying a big beefy drill, you don't care that much about the clutch. You're not doing a lot of sensitive work with it. You might use a smaller drill, like a 12 volt, for example, to do that. I totally get it. I just wanted to put this to rest and find out how much the clutch performance is impacted by the battery and by the gear. So that's just me kind of scratching that itch, and now we know. For the next two rounds, we're gonna swap out these big old batteries and put some much smaller batteries in each of the drills, and we'll go through first gear and second gear again and see what impact that has on these driving of the screws and the performance of the clutch. Okay, Milwaukee's up first again with first gear on the smaller battery. Can you believe I've been doing these DIY videos for 13 years now? I'm trying to get to 1 million subs by the end of this year. If you can help me out by subscribing, I'd certainly appreciate that. Okay, now for the DeWalt, and this is with a little two amp hour battery, because we're gonna be doing tool giveaways, we're gonna be doing DIY product giveaways, and cash giveaways as soon as we hit that million for all of our oh subscribers. Gosh. So thanks so much for helping out with that. That is ridiculous, okay. That kind of satisfies me in a way because that's what I suspected. Uh, first gear, it just stinks. It just doesn't do it. So even with a tiny little battery, so the battery had very little, if any, impact on that. Next is flex. We are in first gear and we've got our little two and a half amp hour battery on this. And once again, last in this round is Ryobi. So first gear, first setting, little battery. This is a two amp hour. All right, there's our second to last round. Again, small batteries and with first gear. And again, our Milwaukee did okay, but got a little aggressive. DeWalt was absolutely terrible and just drove every single thing all the way into the ground. The Flex honestly looks fantastic on this one. I try not to be like biased, but I mean, the results are right here. It really did a good job with that. And then Ryobi did, I'd say second best, looking pretty good. 
Don't forget to download my power drill feature guide that explains the five main features of your drill, including the clutch, and how you can make sure you're using those properly every time you grab your drill. Now for this final round, we're doing the most sensitive or least amount of power possible. We've got the highest gear, so that's gonna spin faster but with less torque, and then we've got the smaller batteries. So this should give us our best results in terms of the sensitivity of the clutch. Let's see how they do. We're starting off with the Milwaukee, and let's take it down to one. Okay, DeWalt, third gear, small battery. Here we go. Now we've got the Flex, we've got it in second gear, small battery. Here we go. Crud. That went way down there. Good thing I have telescoping magnets, assuming I can find it at all. I can. Okay, last drill, Ryobi. Second gear, small battery. All the way in. All right, and there's our last round. Again, these were the highest gear with the low or small battery, the low amp hour battery, and then uh, see our apples to apples here. I'm gonna just throw in our Fest tool as well, since that also used a smaller battery, and see what we get here. So over here, our Milwaukee didn't do a great job. I mean, that's as sensitive as it should be able to be, but it feels like it didn't really change much through the different rounds. In fact, that might've been a little bit worse. Uh, DeWalt was slightly better than it has been in the past, but still honestly not good. The Flex looks really good. Um, it just consistently does a pretty nice job at graduating down and starting nice and uh, sensitive, nice and low there. And then next, our Festool also did a really good job like we saw before. Everything's looking good there. And this one might be one of the best, the Ryobi. Again, another good looking one. Now I suspect that the issues we're seeing with the DeWalt have less to do with this particular brand than this particular drill. I don't think it's a DeWalt wide issue. I think this thing is just so powerful and has so much torque that it can't really be light or sensitive in the clutch. So to put that to the test, I've got an atomic series, same 20 volt, I'm using the same flex volt battery. I'm gonna put it in second gear, it's highest gear, and make sure that it can handle these pretty well. So let's take a look. Okay, first graduation. Wow, okay, maybe I'm wrong. Third. Whoa, whoops. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, I'm being totally honest and transparent here. That is not what I expected. I fully expected this thing to do just fine. Now I do wonder if the battery has something to do with it, at least on this particular drill. So I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna put it back to one and put this much smaller battery on here. But I'm gonna try maybe just on the, I'm gonna flip this around and just drive one in on the lightest setting on the smallest battery on a smaller torque DeWalt. Let's just see. All right, a little better. Let's go to three. But not very good still. Okay. Well, I did not expect that at all. I seriously was hoping that as I did this with a much lower torque drill, that it would show that it's quite a bit different. But even in the lightest gear and with the smallest battery, this thing was just not sensitive with the clutch. So I can only chalk that up to it being a pretty soft material, the MDF here. And these are self-tapping screws, but you can see apples to apples how it compares to the other brands out there. DeWalt's are kind of brutes. That's what it comes down to, but I'm pretty surprised by that. So there's all of our results. Let's put a few of these side by side so you can see the difference it makes and we'll see if we can draw a real conclusion here. So there are our overall results. You can see some pretty clear distinctions between the different drills. Remember, these are all high torque, high power drills, just the, the best that they have to offer for each different brand. So over on the Milwaukee, it really never made a nice little stair step. Usually by that uh, second to last, the uh, 12 setting on the clutch, if not before, it's driving them all the way in. Over on the DeWalt, that is the poorest performance of any of these. It really just did come in last. It just has zero sensitivity. I mean, it's useful in some cases, but 
Typically you're not buying most of these drills to be real sensitive anyway. You're gonna use a lower power drill. Just interesting to see the difference between these though. The Flex, I think, it really is the best performing, best looking one. You've got a nice stair step in every single case, regardless of battery size and regardless of gear. So it did a nice job there. The Festool did okay, especially when you're in the higher gear, it did great. I mean, it looks just fine. It's just those lower gears that can't handle the sensitive settings on the clutch. And then Ryobi, I think, was probably our second best one. And that one did pretty good overall, but again, really struggled with the low gears. So it did definitely better uh, in the higher gear there. Well, by looking at these, I think we actually have some conclusions that make sense here. You can see the first two rows closest to you are the higher amp hour batteries, the higher capacity batteries, the back row being the smaller batteries. I'm not really seeing any noticeable difference between them. So I do not think, based on all the testing we've done today, that the battery makes any difference in the performance of the clutch. That's pretty cool to know. It's one thing that we can rule out completely, but I wanted to test that just to make sure. And we can definitely say that the gear that you're in makes a huge difference in how effective the clutch is. When you're in those low gears, like gear one, it's just not gonna be as resistant, it's not gonna be as sensitive as it might be when it's in the highest gear. We're seeing a clear night and day difference between almost all of these. Flex is really consistent between them, Ryobi's more consistent, but in general, there is absolutely a difference between what gear you're in. If you haven't already, be sure to check out this video where I show you exactly how a clutch works, when to use it, and even the inside of a clutch, the mechanics of how it actually functions. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Let's get to that million. Thanks for watching.